I can introduce our second speaker, Donna Shaw. Donna, as you know, is a very well-known and much-loved author of primary courses, such as the latest New High Five, Heroes last year, and Footprints, and many others as well. I won't go into the list, but she's well-loved by all of us. And today, she would like to talk to us about using projects to develop 21st century skills. So welcome, Donna. Thank you, Louise. Uh, good evening, everybody. Now, we're going to start today's webinar by looking at some data from a study of uh, children and internet use here in Spain. Uh, here are two findings. Uh, the first one is the percentage of 10-year-old children who use the internet. And the second one is the percentage of 12-year-olds who have a phone with internet connection. Now, you'll see there are no numbers there, and that's because I want you to try to guess the percentage. What do you think? OK, so this is a, another have you say. And the question will appear on your screen now. Can you guess the two percentages um, for number one, for the 10-year-old children who use the internet, and number two, the 12-year-olds who have a phone with internet connection? So we'll give you a couple of seconds to um, answer in with percentages. Yes? Yes, please. Okay. Can I have a go? Go on. You know what? I think, hmm, I would nearly say that, um, I don't know, 10 year old children might be 90% use the internet, and maybe the 12 year olds have a phone with maybe a bit lower, or maybe a bit higher, 95%. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what people have to say. We'll just give people another minute. I don't know. It, it's hard to say. I just think of my nieces and nephews. Yes. And I've got a, a nephew who is 10, and I've got um, a niece who's also 12, and, you know, all their friends seem to use them. So, Carol, thank you. Carol Will Gomez is saying 90%, okay? for the first one. Um, she hasn't said for the second one. Oh, sorry. Um, Clara Clamps is saying, Maria Clara Clamps, 80% for the first one and 60% for the second. Sam Nixon is saying 80 and 70%. Um, let me see one second. Um, Sylvia Sanz, 80% uh, and 90%. Mm -hmm. OK, all Christina, very high. Christina, 90 and 60 are a bit like me. Yes. Or maybe I've influenced their, their thoughts. Um, yes, 80, 70, 80, 90. Shall we have a look at them? Yeah, let's have a look. OK. So you were quite right. Almost 90% of 10-year-old children use the internet here in Spain. And by the end of mm. primary, 75% of 12-year-olds have down. a phone with internet connection. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's very clear is that digital technology and um, internet are very much part of children's lives. So what are the implications for, um, for learning? Well, uh, thanks to the internet, our learners have access to a huge amount of information, uh, more than ever before, and they do need help uh, to manage that uh, information and to organise uh, what, what they see. Uh, internet has created new learning communities. Now children can be in contact uh, with uh, learners in different parts of the world. Um, in your classrooms, for example, uh, children uh, can do projects with learners in other countries, in other schools, and they use technology such as uh, Skype or uh, emails to, um, to, to communicate and to collaborate on uh, projects to create materials. 
but outside of the classroom mm. learners also are increasingly belonging to online learning communities mm -hmm. uh, such as blogs or forums or chat groups and these are usually organized around their interests maybe gaming or, or sport and these learners need uh, help to communicate their ideas and their and their opinions confidently I think the third implication is that learning now doesn't finish at school it's mm -hmm. become a lifelong process mm -hmm. uh, the information we have um, at the moment uh, may be out of date in in a few years time or even obsolete and so we need to to be lifelong learners that are independent and are able to reflect on what we know now 21st century skills are um, is a term used to describe the abilities we need to develop to thrive in this um, information rich um, interconnected digital world um, and I think there are, we're going to focus today on four mm. of these, um, which are known as the four C's. Uh, we've got communication, uh, which is the ability to communicate your ideas, your thoughts, your questions, and to uh, also involves um, being an active listener and being able to construct, co-construct mm -hmm. um, a conversation. Uh, we've also got collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, which is the ability to work well with other people um, to achieve an objective, but it also involves a willingness to, to participate and also to share responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We've got creativity, uh, which is the ability to, to take existing uh, information and then make new connections and to um, to create new ideas and this also involves I think an element of risk-taking and, and imagination um, and finally there's critical thinking um, which is the ability to to be open-minded to be flexible when faced with um, a problem or faced having to make a decision and this also involves thought processes like analyzing evaluating or reflecting um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the four C's. Um, now I think projects are a perfect way for developing these skills in the classroom. Um, now a project, like a good story, has a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to look at those three stages. But before we do that, we're going to think about how to choose a, a topic mm -hmm. for a project. Now you may want uh, to uh, to let your your students, the learners, choose the topic, and that's fantastic. Um, and obviously, there there'll be discussion and negotiation, and probably a vote. Um, but then, alternatively, you may want to choose the the topic. And this is where I'm going to ask you for your ideas. Um, when you have to choose a topic mm -hmm. uh, for a project, what do you consider? What elements are important for you? Okay, again, another have you say. The question is on your screen now. What elements are important when choosing a topic for your project? Uh, we'll give you a couple of seconds, well, half a minute to write in your answers. You don't need to write complete sentences, just key ideas. Okay, and let's see. Um, I'll just bring this down. Well, can I? Because no, I'm just thinking when I've been in the classroom. Uh, when and I did like doing projects with short projects mm. um, and elements that were important obviously were um, I think it was this, the structure having stages and signposts and keeping the children on board mm -hmm. and giving them a sense of purpose mm -hmm. and that there was a journey that there was, you know, they had to produce something, mm -hmm. there was an end product, but at the same time, to get there, there was a process mm -hmm. that had to be followed through. Yeah, yeah. And I was very interested in that, yes. and projects condense in many ways mm -hmm. so many skills Absolutely. and integrate so many mm -hmm. skills. Um, and now we're getting some answers from um, uh, people, and let me just go back because they're coming in fast and furious <laughs> and I need to keep an eye on all of this. Um, Idoya again 
is saying something which is motivating and relevant for them. So children's interests Absolutely. are coming to the Absolutely. fore, involving their lives, mm -hmm. so some way related from Mariana, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, contents you can work uh, with, um, okay. Contents that you can work on and how motivating they are. So mm -hmm. again, the student focus is key and their interests and engagement. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, is there anything, a topic, yes, authenticity ah, as well, that's quite that's, interesting, that's which interesting. might be related to purpose. Mm -hmm. um, that was from uh, Maria Jose Vivancos, thank you Maria Jose for that insight. And yes, so again, everybody seems to be saying about, talking about interests and motivation okay. and purpose. Okay, fabulous, thank you. fabulous ideas. Okay, well, I've made a list of five things that I certainly consider, and not surprising, <laughs> uh, it's, it's students' interest. I think also it has to be uh, connected to their lives, it has mm -hmm. to be relevant to their lives, mm -hmm. relevant to what's happening outside uh, the classroom. Uh, is it, if it isn't interesting, well, basically you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important mm -hmm. that uh, projects don't just become um, a way of presenting mm. what they've learned or what they know. They should also be opportunities for creating knowledge, mm -hmm. for new learning, uh, because learning by doing is very exciting mm. and that's what projects mm -hmm. are all about. Uh, can learners make choices? Now we don't want topics or projects that are so narrow that mm. the children are doing all the same thing at the same time. But I think there has to be opportunities for children to take, to direct the project in some way and have a decision on what the final product, product is going to be. Uh, a, a mm. variety of skills, obviously, and we can uh, we want them to develop their research skills, mm -hmm. their language skills, clearly, mm -hmm. and also these very important 21st century skills. And I think, mm -hmm. will there be an audience? Mm. Uh, we don't want children to be doing a project in a vacuum just mm. to get a, a mark. Um, to make it meaningful, there needs to be a, a, an audience there, some way of sharing what they've, the work they've done and the knowledge they've had. Okay, well here are, are some topics mm. that I've used in the past. Uh, we've got islands, um, healthy life, uh, spring with the little children, mm. uh, London, which is always mm. very exciting, especially uh, in, mm. with older children in Quinto Sexto, and, and zoos. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're going to look at activities um, from all of these uh, projects uh, for the rest of this, this webinar. So, okay. We're going to go back to beginning mm -hmm. a project then. Now I think the important thing is to have a stimulus that's going to excite children, that's going to make them um, curious, spark their curiosity, their imagination. We can use visuals, we can use unusual objects, and I think we can also use sounds. Oh. Ah. Ah. Okay, um, now in this, in this um, activity, which is to introduce uh, the zoo project, I used an animal sound. Um, oh. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my, my, my interest is piqued by this okay. curiosity. The children <laughs> listen to the, to the sound and have, have to guess uh, which animal they can hear. Now obviously children are going to be using their own knowledge of what animals sound like, they're going to be making deductions, uh, there can be some discussion on this. And of course I'm going to ask you to do it too. So. This is a poll, so a slightly different from the have you say. This time you've got a question, the same, a question, but you've got options and you choose the correct op option. One, dolphins, two, monkeys, and three, uh, or, or three, penguins. Are you so, ready? Yes. Okay. like a whole farmyard oh, yeah. there. I mean, which animal? <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. that was uh, quite, a, quite a, a chorus, no? Absolutely, <laughs> but it is one, one type of a group of one of these animals. You know what, I'm, let's see, let's see. 
I, I'm, I'm tempted to say something, but I won't <laughs> until people have answered. No, I'm really, because I'm between two. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just updating a yeah. little bit just to get the percentages more what they really are, more like what they really are. Okay, it seems like, oh, it's going up a little bit. Great. Thank you, everybody, for sending in your replies. This is great. Okay, it seems like 40% are saying that it's monkeys and 33% dolphins and 27% penguins. Now, I was between dolphins and penguins. Okay. Uh, 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 oh. Shall we do another one just in case anybody changes their mind? Oui. Oui. <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing with this. It's a, it's a good tool, eh? Um, it's slightly gone up for the monkeys, 42% now, 31% for dolphins and 27% for penguins. <laughs> okay, well. tell us. Put us out of our misery. <gasps> oh, okay. It's the sound of a group oh, of, so of one monkeys at all. Penguins. I was between the penguins and dolphins. Uh -huh. I could, that kind of, I could hear that. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Yes. Um, now, um, obviously, once once these uh, the children discover what the the animal is, and this particular sound is always a surprise, uh, then we go on to to brainstorm what other animals okay. are in the zoo. Um, now, there's a link at the bottom of that page. It's also on. I'm sorry, the slide. It's also in the handout, handout for this session. Exactly. And this is. Um, this is a, a link to a page where you've got lots and lots of um, animal. sound, animal sound clips. Exactly. It's a fantastic resource. Great. Okay. So, we've talked about interesting stimulus. Um, we can also use pictures and ask children to, to describe the picture, to imagine mm -hmm. being there. Yeah. So, this, uh, this picture is a stimulus for getting children to think about spring, this beautiful spring uh, and they're gardening. picture. They're gardening. Very nice. there. Uh, and to support the, the, the learners, um, younger learners, we use a, a dice. Okay. Put that here. Uh, we can see the templates on, on the slide. Mm -hmm. Um, now this dice has got the five senses, so things you can see, things you can hear, things you can touch. Now obviously there are five senses and there are six sides of the dice, so the sixth side is things that you can do. Okay. So I want you to imagine, Louise, okay. that you are in this beautiful spring garden. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you throw the dice? Okay. But I won't throw it to Oh, no, not no, too no. far. No, okay. I can smell. I can smell. So I'm in here. I can smell flowers. Mm. I can smell plants. I can smell the air. No? The flowers? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can smell the earth. <laughs> Okay. okay. Do you want One to have more? another go? Have okay, another I, go. I'm enjoying this, see? I can see. Oh, there are lots of things I can see. I can see a little girl and a uh -huh. little boy, and they're having fun. I can see plants. I can see flowers. I can see a lovely garden, which is all green. green. I can see birds, maybe. I sure there are probably <laughs> birds there in the background absolutely <laughs> because of course it's not just focusing exactly what's in that picture it's no. you, the children are using their imagination exactly. and if they work in groups and take turns to to throw the the dice then obviously they're collaborating to mm. to create this this spring mm -hmm. uh spring um visualization exactly really. Okay. Now, we said before that uh, children have, or that thanks to the internet, children have access to lots of information and they do need help to, to organise it, uh, to put order into what they're seeing. Um, now, I think in, we can begin uh, to, to do this in primary by introducing uh, charts or diagrams and in, in this uh, particular activity for healthy living, the healthy living project, the children classified the activities depending on whether they are healthy, unhealthy, or it depends. Mm, yeah. 
Um, now, the children can do this on their own, but I think it's a, it's a, a fantastic opportunity uh, for them to, to share their knowledge if we do it as a group. And also, there's going to be some negotiation, there's going to be some um, disagreement, disagreement mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. more. And I think as well, it's in those situations, it's very important to, to put or to provide some prompts okay. for, for them. So. Are you oh, ready you again? Me? I think okay. you can. Okay, why so, not? I'm going to ask Good. you the question. Is going to bed late healthy? I think it's unhealthy. Mm. I agree. Certainly every night. Every yes. night. <laughs> yes. Ask okay. a question. Is watching TV healthy or unhealthy? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, watching a little TV is okay, but watching a lot of TV is, is unhealthy. So I think we can put yeah, it. Yeah, I I I, I agree. You I agree. Think, uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it depends. Mm -hmm. Okay, is eating fruit healthy or uh, unhealthy? It absolutely. It's very healthy. <laughs> Okay, so we can do this as a class, but then obviously the children go on to um, to, to add more activities to, to, to that chart. Okay, another chart we can use is a KWHL, mm. and this, this chart was used for introducing um, the topic of London. Um, as a class, again, the children uh, brainstorm, we brainstorm what we know about the topic, so the capital of Britain, and then what we want to mm. know, mm. okay, so that gives us an idea of what we want to research, so where does the Queen live? Um, and then, which I think is a very important part, is how to find out more, where can we go to find ah. that information on the internet, can we ask somebody? I think that's very interesting because I was uh, familiar with the KWL but not with the H. H. Exactly. And that's all about how you learn. Exactly. Study skills. It's, stu mm. it's study skills but mm. also it's problem solving, solving. as exactly. well. Exactly. That's quite interesting. Okay. And then uh, afterwards, at the end of the, of the project, obviously we come back and complete the last mm. column, what, what we've learned. Okay. Now, I think with um, starting a project, um, these are children whose English is their, their a foreign language and we can't expect them to use the vocabulary uh, um, spontaneously. Uh, so I think there needs to be a, a stage when we do present or give them the language they need, either in a labelling activity or a, a brainstorming activity. Okay, so we're going on to the middle of the, the project um, and this is where the children start to investigate and to, to, look for, to look for information. Now, if they're doing the projects in groups, they can investigate things together, mm. but I think it's a good uh, opportunity or is a good idea for children to each child in the group to have a separate or s a little okay. uh, task to do an investigation task. So for example in the island uh, project mm. uh, each child investigated a separate island okay. and uh, they did this uh, by looking at uh, ah. using Google Maps. Yeah. Um, this is a, a screenshot from my from my computer, um, but you can go right in and see the the features on on the on the map. Yes. Do you know this island, Louise? It's near Spain, isn't it? Ah, it's one of. I don't know which one it is, but I think it's one of the Canary Islands. It is. It is. It's, it's one it's, of the bigger ones. It's isn't Tenerife. It? It's ah, it's Tenerife. Tenerife. Oh, okay. Um, now, we said that children need support, they need help uh, to organise information, so we can provide them with a framework for taking their notes. So here, for example, children tick off mm. the, the, the landforms they see or the things, things they see. Okay, we can also use questionnaires for, for finding out uh, information. Uh, here are the children in the healthy living um, projects, they, they interview other children mm. 
each child in the group interviews a different child and then they come back and share mm. their knowledge and try to find a, an area mm. uh, to, to focus on. Uh, I think questionnaires are fantastic uh, activity and uh, children can do them out of the classroom. I, think, I don't think there's any problem with children doing them in Spanish and then coming back mm -hmm. and, and reporting mm -hmm. the information mm -hmm. in, um, in English. So we've had maps, we've had questionnaires, uh, we can also take children on mini field trips. Ah. Uh, in the spring uh, projects, uh, we can take the children into a park next to the school, or if you've got, you're lucky enough to have a garden in the school. So I know some schools have got mm -hmm. little garden projects, little garden projects, and they can go out and and with a partner tick what mm -hmm. what they can see. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if they can't do this in school time, they can do this at home with a with a um, parent or or a helper. Um, and come back to the class uh, and report in my park I can see mm -hmm. and then the things they can see. Mm -hmm. Again all of this information is shared. Okay and then the last way of, of investigating we're going to look at today obviously is the internet uh, especially as the children get older it's an invaluable uh, resource but again children need help um, mm. for the London project each child investigates two attractions and um, but they need to be directed to the mm -hmm. official mm -hmm. web page for each mm -hmm. each attraction and then again, uh, some support on, on taking notes. Uh, what can you see? What can you do? And is it interesting? Mm -hmm. uh, they'll come, come back into their groups and share their information. Lovely. Um, so they've got their information. They've done their, 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 their research. Um, and now it's time to put everything together to, to represent it in some way, to be able to share it. Um, this is when children really need to collaborate. Mm. Uh, it's not always easy and it's very easy to slip into a mother tongue. Um, so we do need to provide support, um, some help for, for, the, for them to have that interaction. So we can see here, why don't we Making suggestions. For making suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also guide them, remind them to take turns um, and also listen and to, and to respect. So let's have a look what uh, these children oh, can come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, um, with, now we've got the island project mm -hmm. and here the children have created their own islands um, and Lovely. are using it for uh, for a game, Lovely. a game. And so, ah, so other okay. children are the audience, Lovely. okay, and they're using that to play a game. Ah, lovely. Um, in the healthy food uh, project, the children work together. They identify um, an area they want mm -hmm. to 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 focus on, which will help their classmates. Um, so, for example, cleaning your teeth, going to bed early. Healthy habits. Healthy habits. But mm -hmm. they choose the one they, they, they think is the more important. Mm -hmm. And they create their, their digital Lovely. poster. Mm -hmm. um, I think, again, we can share this on the class website, the English yes. website or blog, if we yes. have one, or the school yes. website, so that Wonderful. other children can, yeah. can enjoy. I love uh, the title, Healthy Food Rocks. <laughs> Nice one. Okay, we've got the the spring. Uh, the children have visualised, imagined oh. from a picture. They've been out. They've done their field study, and then they come back and they create uh, mm. a, a nice class display. Mm. Uh, now this display can be used in lots of ways, counting the animals, the colours of the animals, where everything is on the on the in the scene. Uh, this can be in the classroom, mm -hmm. it can be in the corridor, mm -hmm. or it could even be in the entrance to the school for everybody to, to enjoy. Uh, but all of the children have collaborated. They've all put their little bit into, into that display. Um, we've got the, the London project, and the children choose in their groups, choose the attractions they like ah. the most, <laughs> and they prepare an itinerary 
for a class trip Ooh. to I know Ooh. and they get very excited yeah. about the class trip <laughs> to wow. London and the four places they want to see and then they give their presentation using their presentation skills to the to the rest of the class Lovely. and then the class can vote on which at well, London trip, trip is the best oh, one. The one they want, want to, to do. really do. The one they want <laughs> to really do. <laughs> and then the last thing, obviously, is the, is the zoo project. That's the last one. Um, the children have uh, brainstormed the type of animal, uh, sorry, the, the animals in the zoo, the facilities Jeez. they need. They've looked at maps um, and, and now they've created their own zoo. Wow. Uh, which they will then share with the rest of the class. Lovely. <laughs> okay, so those are five yes. di different projects. Wonderful, wonderful. So, the last stage of the of the project, we've had the beginning, we've had the middle, which mm -hmm. includes the presentation, mm -hmm. because the final stage is the reflection mm -hmm. on what on the whole process of what's happening. How have we done? How have we done? Mm. How have we done? Uh, and I think it, it's important to think what have we learned? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we're talking about content here. The children are, are learning uh, new things. How have we worked together? Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How have we have we mm. listened? Uh, have we helped, helped each, other. each other? And then also, what activities I've enjoyed doing? Mm. Again, with this idea of being a, um, a lifelong mm. reflective learner, it's mm. important uh, to know what your learning style is. What are your preferences? What mm -hmm. do you like to mm -hmm. do? Okay, and obviously this is all developing critical thinking. Exactly. So. Great. Wow, so much to think there's about. There's a lot eh? there's there. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. There's an awful lot, eh? Okay, and you may have questions and you may have comments and thoughts that you would like to share with us now, so please do so. You can send your question or comments now to Donna. We'd be delighted to hear from you. No, really a lot, and while we're waiting for your answers to come in, I mean, I, th there's so much there, there's so much. I love the way it's all integrated. I love the way that you're working on so many skills um, quite intensely, but not in a, very, in a very natural way as you would do when you're doing any particular task. If you think about it, any task that we do mm -hmm. involves a range of, and this with its structure, just Absolute. those elements are Absolutely. So I mean, there's a, and I think you know, developing collaboration, mm. cooperation in the classroom you know, is very important. It is. It is know, so. absolutely. Okay, let's see what people have to say. And um, people are saying, uh, is there more interesting? Okay, interesting topics for kids from Francia. Um, uh, uh, let me see. It is interesting for them. Let's just see. We we'll go down a little bit. Any more down here? The answers are coming in. Let's go back up. And oh, there we go. It's there. One more. Right. We'll just wait for more. Let's go back. And here. Another comment, actually, um, that somebody said was um, quite interesting, the way in which um, the personal interest of the uh, students is very much, it's very subtle the way it's, it's, it's obvious that, the, you know, the teacher wants to direct things and, you know, you have certain goals and the, their curriculum needs, but at the same time you can easily incorporate children's motivation and interest and the sense of choice there absolutely mm, without it being unmanageable mm. because sometimes when with large groups mm. 25 30 you know the idea of giving choice can be quite daunting I at times but the way it's presented here is that it's specific choice mm. no it's not no ab absolutely I think um, 
I mean, choice can be daunting for the teacher, but it mm-hmm. can also be very daunting for the student. Absolutely. Some students don't like that. They exactly. like they like to know what they they have to do. Exactly. So I think providing small opportunities exactly. for for creativity or personalization exactly. within a structure yes. can actually you know be quite. Exactly, because I like that. In the, I think you know, you made a point of that there with the choice in terms of ha- each student having two options. Exactly. But within a number of options, it's not mm-hmm. unlimited. So it's very structured. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's very managed. But at the same time, it's taking into account that children need to develop their preferences as well and explore their preferences rather. Uh-huh. No, absolutely. Go through that um, process. Okay, um, Claudia, thank you very much. Claudia Reguera, she's saying thank you very much, Donna. It was so inspiring to listen to your examples about projects. Um, I will do one soon. Ah. What more can you ask for? <laughs> Great, thank Great. you. Um, Jose Crucera Rodriguez, um, how long do the projects usually take? Because that would be a, a question. No, it's, it's it? a good question. Now these are these are all mini projects. Yes. Um, because obviously uh, we're we're um, we're uh, we're working. Limited. We're limited in the time, and we're working with usually with a course book or cu- a curriculum. Um, I estimate uh, two lessons, possibly mm. a third lesson, mm-hmm. if we have presentations as well. Um, you can also perhaps integrate some ho- work f- f- for, for home. homework. Yeah. Yes. So you could perhaps, you know, it would vary depending on what you decide to do in class and what maybe you give as homework, but obviously with good preparation in class as well. But two or three classes, you would say. I would say, I would yeah. say two or three. I mean, f- especially for example, the spring yes. project. Uh, there's going to be, so, you know, sticking and creating yes. there. Yes, but, mm, great. Three, three lessons should should do it in most cases. Great, thank you. And Noemi says, I'm glad to listen to you, Donna. It was so interesting for me. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope, and I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> that you will go away and you will want to try out some of these projects, the London Adventure, the Spring One, the Zoo, um, the Garden Project. That could be even a project. Oh, um, yes. And healthy, we, healthy, healthy living, as, healthy living mm. as well. I mean, they're all very, they're so relevant to the primary classroom, um, to the topics that we're covering. But um, they integrate so many of the skills that we're working on during the course in in a wonderful way. So these would be every couple of units, wouldn't they? Um, I th- I think it, it's, it's going to depend, depend on, on on each class. Yes. I mean, I think uh, you know most people would like to. I would like to do one each term because yes. I think they're just so enriching for, yes. the, for the for the children, and it's a good break away from sometimes the you know the, the rigidity exactly. of the of the of, of course material. Yes, so, but but well, it also puts all the course material into context. Exactly. You know, it's not separate, is no. it? It's very much no, part no, of it. No, no, we're bringing in the, the, exactly. all the learning. Exactly. Christina Avila says, just amazing. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, Mariana Lopez says, well, they, they often share information in Spanish. This part is difficult to do in English. Yes, it is, but it, it is. takes time, doesn't it? And reinforcement. I, I think all we can do yeah. really is, is support the children by uh, giving them um, help in, in collecting the information. We saw the, the notes there in directing them to, for example, online to official web pages um, and then providing tho- those prompts for suggestions. Exactly. Even if it's just at those points, they at those stages, they're using those suggestions exactly. and answering. And then little by little, I exactly. think, the children become more confident. Uh, with with using yes, and, English and comfortable and comfortable and at the end the product is in English exactly exactly so they're actually using a they're lot they're using of a lot and the thought a process lot. is is there Absolutely. as well so. a lot mm. and um, Rosa wants to thank you Rosa Rosa Eche Burua Esteves wants to share an idea Ooh, with us uh, she says that we're doing um, a project where one is the waiter and three are clients who go to dinner together and they prepare it and then they represent it in front of the class and they record it. So it's fantastic. Isn't it? isn't That's that fantastic. That's really I love it. There's so much involved there, yes. isn't there? And then the final representation. Wonderful. Um, Sylvia says, a pleasure to hear you. Hoping to, uh, that you do more web- webinars. Thank, Thank you, you from Maria Dolores. 
and yes and uh, there will be a handout mm -hmm. okay. with all of those links then. there will be a handout we will send you a handout thank you very much Donna. thank you Louise. it's been a real pleasure eh? <laughs> thank, thank you, you Louise. so much and thank you everybody for listening <laughs> and yes thank you all for for listening for attending <laughs> We hope that you have found these teacher training videos of real use and relevance to your classes. We would like to remind you that you can find many more practical teaching ideas and tips, articles and video clips in Macmillan Advantage. Don't miss this opportunity to continue your professional development.